Hey everyone, Dylan Schumacher, Citadel Defense. And today I want to talk about former President Donald Trump. So I've been thinking about this for weeks now. And uh, I thought it was time to finally kind of put, put some pen to paper here. So I do not think that Donald Trump was at the end of the day a net positive for America or for liberty, particularly from, from a liberty-minded perspective. And I think that those of us who consider ourselves on the right-hand side of things uh, need, to, need to really take a look in the mirror about that. Uh, full disclosure, I did vote for Trump the second time around um, because I, I certainly thought he was better than the alternative. But as I've thought about it since then, I've thought, what what did Trump really do for us? For, for you want to make America great again. What did he really do to that end? And, and I think the answer is he was a net negative in, in, in that department. So I have a list here and, and, and I'm going to walk through it with it. So the two big positives I could think was that he did do some deregulation and that is in uh, various industries that honestly I don't participate in and don't know too much about, but I do know that he did do some deregulation here and there. So, okay, I mean, that's, that's good. You know, less, less government is, is good, I guess. Uh, and then expose uh, the bias of the media, which I thought that was, that was something he certainly did for me. I will admit that. You know, I came into the Trump presidency being like, yes, of course, the media is biased, but you know, and, and by the end, I'm like, oh God, like they're, they're off the deep end, insane. Um, and I wasn't even really consider myself a, a huge Trump guy. I didn't vote for him the first time around. And uh, that, that was a, a big thing that he certainly uh, exposed. So those were the two net positives out of the Trump presidency that I could, that I could think. And then I started thinking of, well, what, what were the negatives? And I had a much longer list. Uh, first of all, he banned bump stocks. Donald Trump passed more gun control or enacted more gun control, didn't pass anything, enacted more gun control than Barack Obama. He, he did more gun control than Barack Obama. He directed the ATF to reinterpret a law. First of all, the ATF doesn't interpret laws. Uh, that, that's not, they're part of the executive branch. The executive branch doesn't interpret laws. That's part of the judicial branch. Okay, so I don't know how you can, as an executive, direct the executive agency in order to do that. He was also very for red flag laws. I don't have that on here, but there's multiple uh, clips of, of Trump talking about confiscating guns first and then going to court. All complete and utter garbage, okay? Uh, violates multiple constitutional amendments, okay? So he enacted more gun control than Barack Obama, and somehow still the NRA supports him and we're on his side and, and all this garbage. And I'm like, whoa, wait a second here, let's just look at the facts. So that, that's a big one. Uh, debt, he came in complaining about Barack Obama's debt, which was ludicrous, and then proceeded to just tack on more. I think at all said and done, it was another seven trillion he added on during his time. I could be wrong about that. Someone can look up the exact number, but it was a lot, okay? Uh, 90 billion, $900 billion stymie. So at the end, on his way out the door, he signed this $900 billion pork bill. After getting on TV and talking about how, how much garbage it was, which it was garbage, and saying he wasn't gonna sign it because it sends all these millions of dollars to other countries and that's ridiculous and that's not putting America first. And then he folds and signs it. One of the most garbage bills that I know of in my adult life, and he signs it on his way out the door. Snowden Assange, on his way out the door, he had another opportunity to pardon uh, Snowden and pardon Assange. Did he? No. Why not? Why not? Why didn't he do that? Snowden, who's by the way been proven 100% correct. Guy's an American hero. Uh, Obamacare, didn't repeal Obamacare. Now, I will be honest here, he did try. Uh, and, and, and there was some effort that was put out there and John McCain, may he never rest in peace, uh, ended up voting against it and, and I remember how that went. So that one's not 100% in Trump's camp, but that was a problem. National Carry Reciprocity or the Hearing Act, you know when the Republicans first took control back in 2016, they were gonna pass National Carry Reciprocity and, and they were gonna get that Hearing Act which would make suppressors, take them off the NFA item list. Uh, and they were, gonna, they were gonna do those things. Did any of that ever happen? No, no it didn't. 
Um, they did nothing, in fact, for those two years. They talked about lots of stuff they were going to do, but then when it came time for push to shove, the Republicans did nothing to advance your individual liberty for those two years that they had control. Think about that. They didn't do anything to, to, to actually make your life better or to advance your liberty. Tobacco age of 21. Not only did President Trump sign a bill that raised the national age of, to, uh, to buy tobacco to 21, but he bragged about it on Twitter, because I remember it. Uh, imagine, imagine being 20 years old and having tens of thousands of dollars of school debt and working full time to put yourself through college and being in college and being an adult, but you can't go down to the store to buy a pack of cigarettes. It's the stupidest thing ever. So at the end of the day, again, you gotta remember the perspective I'm coming from here is liberty. And at the end of the day, Donald Trump did not do anything to actually protect or expand individual liberty. In fact, he did the exact opposite and he curtailed liberty in this country. So it was a net loss when you're measuring it on that scale. This isn't a Republican or a Democrat thing for me. Uh, personal liberty and large government are incompatible. One cannot suffer the other to live. Okay, and the larger the government gets, the smaller your personal liberty is going to get. And the larger your personal liberty is, the smaller the government's going to have to be. And at this point, we are on a trajectory where the government will just grow and grow and grow and grow and grow. And it has been that way since the boomers have been in charge. Thank you for ruining America. So the big problem is that because nobody thinks it's a problem that the government is huge and spends trillions of dollars into debt and all these other things, no one thinks it's a problem anymore. There's a couple of John the Baptist crying out in the wilderness voices speaking against the growth of government and, and God bless them. But by and large, all of the politicians are okay with or bought into the idea that government is massive and that's an okay thing to be. It's okay to do all of this stuff and sign these huge bills that you don't necessarily read and that are, you know, 5,000 pages and you have 24 hours to look at it before you vote on it and all this stuff. That's totally okay. And all the while, while that golem of government grows, your personal liberty is, is what's paying the price. And eventually we're going to do that to a point where you don't, you don't have personal liberty. So uh, at the end of the day, I think Trump was a net loss. Uh, I certainly wish he was president now over, over Biden, but that's a different discussion. It's a net loss. It's a net loss because he and, and his crew did not value individual liberty. And finding a politician who does do that these days, again, it's extremely rare. As long as we keep growing the government, we will keep shrinking liberty. Show me how those are compatible. Show me. I would love to see that. I love liberty. It's the reason I love living in this country. And if we have any hope of preserving it, we need to stop growing the government. As Ronald Reagan once said, another not friend of personal liberty, uh, said that the, uh, the, nine most scary, the nine scariest, the nine most dangerous words in the English language were, I'm from the government and I'm here to help. Do brave deeds and endure.